Shalom family. This quick video is a teaching lesson for new people. Let no one tell you what to do. Now I have to do this because we have new people. This is mostly for new people. We have new people to come to the channel all the time. They begin to listen to the videos. They begin to learn and they leave good comments. They in agreement. But the moment they hear something they never heard before, they quick to speak against it. And they quick to say things to speak on something where they have no knowledge, where they have no, they've done no research, no study. They coming straight from the religions just like we have, and they come with ignorance. We all did this. We came out of these churches, and we're ignorant coming out of the church. If you're coming out of an, a camp, any camp, I don't care for how many years, you're still coming out of ignorance. And so we have to be careful before we open our mouth and when we say things. And we must understand, we can't tell other people what to do. So I have a new subscriber here. And this person, you know, I'm using this person as a teaching lesson. And, and I need to do this from time to time when needed to help others to understand the thing we should not do. Speak on something we have no knowledge of. If you don't know, don't leave a comment. Learn. Continue to learn. Don't block yourself from, from learning. Open your mind. Get out of the box. So I mentioned spirit world, spiritual world. There is no spiritual world. And the person going to say, what do you mean there is no spiritual world? Of course, we know there is a spiritual world. The spirit goes somewhere, and that's the spirit world. Well, my question, see, when they bring these statements, I bring them a question. What scripture says there is a spiritual world? Then we hear crickets. Now you look foolish. See, if you hadn't opened your mouth, you wouldn't look so foolish. We can tend to look foolish sometimes. It's best if you don't know to keep your mouth closed. Just because you've heard spirit world all your life, I'm coming asking. This video here was concerning. There is no spiritual. And she heard me say there is no spirit world. But it's an actual place that exists. It's physical. It's tangible. You can see it. We were speaking about this, and my son mentioned something in the Shabbat class, in the Shabbat, on the Shabbat day, not in the class. And he said, Dad, there are gases that's invisible. You can't see it, but it will kill you. So just because we can't see it, he said, that doesn't mean it's spiritual. You just can't see it. My wife said, yes, that's correct. And I agreed also. She added on, there are microscopic Living things that we can't see in the water. They crawl up in your body. You get flesh-eating bacteria. You die. You can't see it, but it's there. You need a microscope to see it. It doesn't mean it's spiritual. So the scripture says nothing about a spirit world. They can't give me any scripture on it. So I don't believe it. I don't believe what we heard. All right? Let me get to the next comment. And I didn't get to, I only get I only got portions of the comment. I don't have the complete comment because it's not there anymore. I need to start taking screenshots of these things when I need to do a teaching lesson. This lesson is very simple. Don't, we're not in position to tell anyone what to do. And this person think that they can come and tell me what to do. I'm with you on a lot of things, most things that you have said. Number one, you're not with me. I'm, I'm, I'm reading the scripture. I'm bringing forth scripture. If I said there is no verse in scripture that says there is a spirit world, then you must come and say, here's where the father said there's a spirit world. Here's where the prophet said spirit world. If you can't do that, then what are you refuting? Your argument is useless. I'm with you on most things. So when I bring out the scripture, you're not with me. You're with, the, I'm trying to get the people with the most high. She think I'm trying to get her with me. I'm leading people to the most high. If you with me, you off. Don't get with me. Don't follow me. How many times I have to say this? See, new people don't understand. 
They don't understand what comes forth from this channel. I'm with you on most things what you said, but what you said about Paul, the apostle, you need to go back to the altar and have a talk with the most high. So this person want me to commit iniquity. This person says, go, I need to go back to the altar. She knows, she, she knows not what an altar is. Here is an altar. I brought this out many times on many, many of the videos. I broke it down. Show what an altar is. The table in a Christian church. I came from the altar. I went to the altar every Sunday. I worked in and around the altar. I bowed down. I prayed at the altar. What in the world are you talking about? So you're telling me to go back to wickedness, the church? See, she's using English words, have no idea what she's saying. So I have to show when people come to the channel not knowing any better. Don't do this, new people. You don't know, it's okay. There are things I don't know. If I don't know, believe me, I will keep my mouth shut. I won't speak on things I not, I'm not knowledgeable in. And so she's talking, telling me I need to go back to the altar. She's telling me what to do. No one, we have no leader. We have no king. Scripture says when there's no leader, no king, go back home. Go home. I'm not going back to the Christian church. Altar, a structure. Upon, and I'm going to read it just like it is written. Upon which offerings such as sacrifices are made for re religious purposes. Altars found at shrines, temples, churches, and other places of worship. They're used particularly in Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, Judaism, modern, modern paganism. I'm not going back to this lady. Please don't tell anyone to go back to captivity. Go back to lies. Go back to things outside of Torah. All these things, the altar is outside of Torah. Let's go deeper. I brought out the etymology of altar. Old English, altar. This altar, see, this altar, our perception of the most high. This change who we are. This change who we should be. High altar. Pay close attention to high altar. Altar for sacrifice to other great mighty ones. See, the only thing altar do, the most high has nothing to do with altar. They didn't have an altar. You have to know Aubrey to know this. They had a mitzvah. See, I'm at the, I'm looking forward to bringing my offering to Louis and Louis will handle it on the mitzvah. Not altar. Altar is wicked. And this person telling me to go, I need to go back to wickedness. That's where I came from. I'm not going back. It's influenced by Latin altis. Altis means high. The most high spoke against high places, high things. He spoke against it. We see the kings, Hezekiah, what is he doing? In 2 Kings 18, 1 through 4, we see the king removing the high places. Removing the high places? Altar is one of the high places? Broken down sacred pillars, cut down wooden images, broken pieces, the bronze serpent, that Moshe had made. Notice, notice something here. Nowhere are we need to be fooling around with this. She's saying go back to this, not knowing what she's saying. Now she's speaking in ignorance. I understand, but she doesn't understand. And so new people, be careful. She, she, you, you, you're causing problems. You're causing trouble. You cause others to go back to the altar. They see what you said. They don't know any better. They may fall back to the altar. I don't have the part where she mentioned do, but she said, this is what she said. She's again telling me what to do. Please stop calling do the Mashiach. What are you talking about? Stop calling do the Mashiach. Let's check, let's check out the scripture here. Second Samuel 5. Look at this, five and three. Here's the king, look at it in, over to the left, you see it in English. King of Hebron, king, do. Malik, dude, it said king, made a lead. Okay, 
You who are? And they anointed. They anointed. Anointed is Mashak. The H 4886. Anointed is Mashak. You have to anoint the king. When you anoint the king, he become the Mashak. The anointed one. H. This is the H 4899. If you know Aubrey, Mashiach, the Mashiach. This is what they become. The Mashiach. Listen to him if he will speak. Who is the Mashiach? Because she doesn't know. She says, stop calling dude the Mashiach. Mashiach is anointed. Notice they Mashiach him. He became the anointed. He is the anointed one. He was the anointed one. The anointed Charles one? H, 4899. Mashiach. 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 Mashiach come from. Here is the H forty-eight eighty-six. Anoint. They anointed dude. Dude was the anointed one. The most high says, Touch not my anointed one. See, this is the anointed one. He was talking about neither do my prophets any harm. So who is the Mashiach? Of the Messiah? The look at B. King of Yasharal. Any king of Yashara was known as the Mashiach. What are you talking about, lady? So you're trying to tell the people? You're trying to tell me that the Mashiach, that dude was not the king of Yashara? That's wicked. And now you have to be blocked. See, you're causing trouble. You're wicked. You let us know who you are. Now, when I say you're wicked, listen. You're speaking against righteousness you're calling evil good and good evil and what you should do is learn learn before you speak this is what isaiah was talking about they call good evil and evil good so dude should be called the mashiach he was the mashiach the most i said he set up this throne forever yahushua come back to sit on the dock of the throne of dude the Mashiach. Now, if you learn, if you research, if you study, you will come to the conclusion. You learn Aubrey. You will come to the conclusion that I really don't need to speak on matters I am I'm ignorant in. If you're not for sure, don't leave a comment, new people. That's easy. We're supposed to be slow to speak, quick to hear, and slow to speak. New people, when you come to this channel, you will hear things you've never heard before. Listen. Listen to the words of the Most High. Listen to the scriptures. Don't listen to me. Don't follow me. Anyone telling you to follow me, come over here, come over there with me, follow me, don't listen to them. Listen to the follow, Father, follow him. Let no one tell you what to do. No one has the authority today to tell you what to do. Follow the Most High. Follow the scripture. Keep Torah. And about Shaul, Shaul never told us to keep the commandments. Yes, I call Shaul the bastard child. We don't know who his father is. A father is a bastard. He never intended for the people to keep Torah. He said what came from Sani was bondage. What the Most High gave us was bondage. So he has no father. He never told us to keep the commandments, keep the law, statutes, and commandments. He never mentions any of this. He had so much to say, but he couldn't simply say, keep the commandments. The man is wicked to the core. And we have those that grew up with Shaul. They love him, and they will stick by him all the way to the fire. So let it be a quick lesson for new people. Make sure you research and study. Do your own research. Do your own study. Before you come with a comment saying things that you know not know not about. And you can't tell people what to do. I can't tell people what to do. I can give you advice, but I can't tell you what to do. At the end of the day, it's up to you. Just like this message. Let no one tell you what to do. You can do this or not. You can be prideful and arrogant. Or you can be humble, but we can't be telling people what to do. Shalom.